All right, everybody, welcome back for game two of week one of the DPL for Wigglytuff's Guild. We are once again in Sword and Shield and we have Sylvie against Itzia. And Sylvie is somebody that I've come to learn about this week and he's a very, very good player. Thrashed me thoroughly in uh, first couple of mocks and even for my own matchup. We're gonna hop right into this. We're gonna check out this game and uh, this this one has an interesting twist. So let's start it out. We see Kirim lead off against Slowbro. We're going to immediately get up a substitute here as Slowbro pretty much can't break this up unless it wastes like Focus Blast into pressure, which is great for us, obviously. Uh, or it starts Calm Mining, but doesn't really want to do that against like Freeze Dry Kyurem, right? So in comes the Silvali. Uh, as we get in, uh, we get off a sub and Silvali is Steel here and it goes for a multi-attack to break the sub, but we do have Reflect on this set as well. And uh, you'll see that we are Mono Freeze Dry on the set. Now, Silvali is going to go for Swords Dance as we switch out to Copperaja, then proceeds to Parting Shot. We did see Parting Shot quite a bit in Mox, and now comes in the Slowbro once again as we get off an Earthquake for just 17%. Kirim comes back in and catches a T-Wave. Now, this isn't a huge problem because we do have Aromatherapy on our Aromatis, as you'll see later. Fire off a Freeze Dry, and we get off good damage on the Slowbro, but it is going to get a free Teleport out into Machamp. This is the problem with Parting Shot, is that it enables Slowbro on this kind of Kirim to just teleport out and get up, get in big threats like Machamp and Obstagoon and Latios. So, in comes the Machamp. Our Reflect goes down. We have to switch into Mana Buzz on the Facade, and luckily, we live the ensuing Close Combat and are able to trade with the Machamp using Brave Bird, and this is huge for us. We do get a crit there. I'm not sure if that mattered because it was minus one defense, and that is a stab Brave Bird from Mandibuzz, of course. Mandibuzz isn't the strongest Mon, but it's still Stab, right? Regardless, this is a pretty big trade for us because Machamp is a massive threat in this game into, into this team. As you can see, there's not much that can switch into the combination of Close Combat, Facade, Heavy Slam, and if it even wanted to, like Revenge or something, right? So down goes Mandibuzz, down goes Machamp. Slowbro comes back in, Kartana's in, and Sylvie switches out into Copperaja here. Uh, I'm guessing not wanting to catch a T-Wave or scouting for the Flamethrower. Rindo Berry was still on the table, of course, so good scout. However, switches out into Copperaja, catches a body press, and it takes 91%. Uh, and then we end up being slower than the Steelix. So actually, I think uh, we switch out, they switch out into Steelix, and yeah. And we end up being slower than the Lix uh, because we are minus speed because we're mixed. <laughs> And as a result, uh, our Copperaja is basically gonna, basically gonna faint here, which is no no bueno for us because this is a massively important piece into uh, this team offensively, actually. It, it breaks really well. Uh, and unfortunately, it does go down here. So uh, we are going to take another body press and down goes the uh, Copperaja. Now, Cinderace comes in, goes for a workup. We are a mix set with Electro Ball and that is going to hit the Silver pretty hard. We do get T-Waved and that actually affects Electro Ball's damage quite significantly because our speed gets halved. So we can't really stay in here. Sylvie makes a switch out into Aromatis on the Scald and we are going to see the Aromatherapy this turn and back comes in the Steelix Massive Threat. We don't really have a switch into this uh, and we are going to switch into Kirim, however, and and body press does under half, which isn't terrible uh, for us. We still have our leftovers and everything, so we get up the reflect here. That's going to minimize the damage from the body press. In comes volley and uh, parting shot out once again. In comes Obstagoon on Roost, so we're back up to full. We switch out to Kartana. Parting shot comes out again. Uh, thank God that Machamp is gone because that would have been devastating. In comes Lix, goes for a uh, goes for Stealth Rocks here, so finally gets those up. And in comes Obstagoon, and we freeze dry it. And I believe uh, we stay into freeze dry again or reflect. I think it's, yeah, it's reflect. So we lose our leftovers here. Now this is a huge turn. So Silvali switches in and we go for our fourth freeze dry of the game. And Silvali Steel comes in and gets frozen. So that's pretty significant because this thing looks like it pretty much just sweeps us, especially if it's an SD set with, uh, which it is, as you can see, um, with flame charge specifically. So if the last move is flame charge, this thing pretty much just wins. But now that it's frozen, it's a lot harder for it to navigate. So we're going to switch on into, uh, Cinderace on the, uh, on the, uh, on the Silvali, sorry, and get off a court change to get rid of the rocks. The rocks end up on the other side. Back comes in Kirim on the Obstagoon. We are going to see a double edge here that is going to do about half, and Latios is going to switch in as we roost, uh, and Silvali Steel comes back in to try to thaw here. So catches the Aromatis. Cinderace is back in. Now we can go for a uh, workup, I believe, this turn. Yep. And uh, in comes Latios, and we switch out into Aromatis on Draco Meteor, so that works out. And then we switch back into Ace, and Itzia catches Sylvie bigly here. So, 
I'm not really too sure why he doubled back into Cinderace. Obviously, he tried to catch uh, the Licks or the uh, Silvali coming in on potential Moonblast, but I think that damage is quite significant and it's quite good for us. Uh, also, Kartana being our win con doesn't really need rocks removed. So even if Lix gets up rocks, it's not the end of the world. So I think Aromatisse is good to just Moonblast that turn. However, so as you can see, Sylvie does go for the double into Cinderace and it doesn't work out. Uh, and now we get in our Kartana. We are going to just Leaf Blade. Steelix is going to take 42 on a crit. It, it ends up being Helmet, so we take a little bit of chip. Uh, and like I said, the rocks, the rocks chip doesn't really matter all that much. Sorry for uh, fast forwarding there. But as you can see, rocks wouldn't really hinder us too much here. However, minus two Draco, like you could make an argument for that. But it comes in Aromatisse again. And I think here we're just going to wish. Yep. And get back in our Kartana. There's uh, no thaw there. And Obstacoon comes in. And Sacred Sword knocks out the Obstacoon. So back comes in Slowbro. Kirim comes in on the Thunder Wave, gets paralyzed again, no biggie. Uh, does get full paralyzed that turn, in comes Silvali, and we are going to switch out into Kartana. It's still frozen, and uh, now we're just going to go for Leaf Blade and to hit KO the Slowbro, which also ends up being Helmet, so it was never Rindo to begin with. So down goes the Slowbro, our Kartana is uh, once again at 68 after two Helmet hits. And uh, in comes Aromatisse on Psychic, and does, is not too hit KO'd here. Uh, so we are going to switch into Cinderace, and uh, now we're going to go into Kartana, catch the Psychic. The Latios ends up being Scarfed, we go for Knock Off, uh, Knock Off the Choice Scarf. And in comes Silvali, and we Knock Off again, and it does not thaw. So this was very dangerous. This was a very, very dangerous uh, sequence here because if the volley gets off a flame charge at any point, it basically just sweeps. Now, Kiram does live a multi-attack because it is quite defensive. However, it's only move is freeze dry. And if you remember the beginning of the game, that only did 10%. So if this Silvali thaws at this very moment, it gets off a flame charge and we lose the game on the spot. That's not what happened. As you can see, knockoff goes through and we end up winning the game. So that was a little bit too close. Uh, and I, Sylvie realized where he went wrong in the end game sequence. He realized that his opponent completely outplayed him, especially on the Draco turn into Cinderace. Uh, I think that that was a very good play. Uh, Itzia realized how Sylvie was playing and basically just made the read that Cinderace was coming back in uh, and that uh, Aromatisse didn't want to stay in to let in both of the steel types. So. Great play from Itzia. Sylvie, also decent, uh, but the, the freeze bailed us out quite a bit there, and the fact that the Silvali stayed frozen for the entire game made a huge, huge impact uh, on how this one ended and ends up with us getting the win. So a little bit lucky, but we do end up with a 2-0 record after game two of week one of the DPL. Stay tuned, more coming tomorrow. We've got game three for you guys. You're not gonna wanna miss it. Make sure to subscribe. If you haven't already, leave a like on the video and I will catch you guys tomorrow. Peace.